is doing the legislative report. Ms. Pearson. Good morning. Well, the state has a budget. Um, Governor Brown has until tonight to sign the budget bill, but his office indicated yesterday that he's going to sign it at 11 today, so actually in about 10 minutes from now. Uh, I thought I'd start you off uh, for the occasion with some fun facts about the budget, if there is such a thing. The budget totals $96 billion in general fund spending. This represents a slight increase from the current year's uh, budget of $92 billion. It's the third largest budget ever passed in California, with the peak being in 2007-2008 with $103 billion, followed by several years of severe shortages and cuts, as I'm sure you remember. This year's budget contains roughly a billion dollar reserve, and not a single Republican voted for the budget. The budget now only requires a majority vote, and the Senate passed the main budget bill by a party line vote of 28-10, and the Assembly a party line vote of 54-25. The legislature reportedly wanted to spend about two to three billion dollars more than the final amount, but the governor's message of fiscal restraint ended up winning the day. And a silver lining to this year's on-time budget is that revenues are exceeding projections by nearly a billion dollars as of reports at the end of May. And those are the reports that were came out last week on the close of May fiscal returns. So that was not part of the negotiations on the budget action itself. Correct. On to bills. We passed a milestone on the legislative calendar at the end of May when all bills either had to have been passed out of their house of origin or they essentially become dormant. Uh, the bill tracking report that's included in each of your packets, which is item, agenda item six, indicates whether each bill made it out of its house of origin, whether it's alive or dead, essentially. Um, I wanted to provide you with a few updates on bills of interest to the council. Um, these are bills I've reported on before. SB 735 by Senator Lois Wolk proposes to commit the council to a specified collaborative process with each of the Delta counties. The purpose of the bill is to ensure that there's a pathway for locals to achieve consistency with the local habitat conservation plan or natural communities conservation plan that they are preparing for their region and our Delta plan. This sort of collaboration is a process that council staff is actually already engaged in, but the bill would require that it occur and it adds a deadline. At our April meeting, you voted to take a formal position of support based on the then current version of the bill, and since then it has been amended once. It may change again in the next few weeks, and it's expected to be heard in the Assembly Water Parks and Wildlife Committee in August. The recent amendment that I just mentioned included two changes to the bill. One is that the deadline for the five MOUs with Delta counties was moved up by 11 months. It used to be January 2015, and now it is February 2014. And the second change is that the MOU process was made voluntary for the locals, although it would remain um, mandatory for the council and for Fish and Wildlife. And this change was made to deal with uh, state-mandated costs to local governments. So what would, the, under the bill as currently written, if a county chose not to engage in the discussion authorized, what would the council do? Well, the council could continue to work with that county, but they wouldn't be directed to enter into an MOU with the county. And they wouldn't be subject to any deadline to do so. Uh, opponents to the bill, which include Aqua, Met, and a host of water agencies, seek to amend the bill to clarify the council's role as it relates to the Bay Delta Conservation Plan. They want to ensure that the bill does not convey any additional authority over the Bay Delta Conservation Plan or otherwise adversely impact the Bay Delta Conservation Plan. Uh, I will continue to engage with the author's office uh, as um, additional amendments are considered, and I'll report back in July, or I'll work with Chris Knopp in the meantime um, if action is necessary by the council. Okay. 
Um, the next bill that I've reported on before, AB 1331, is the Assembly Water Parks and Wildlife Committee's study bill page on the water bond. Page 6 of the legislative report, 1331, AB. This study bill is intended to develop specific cost information to inform negotiations for a revised water bond. Originally comprised of three separate bills, AB 1331 would task three agencies, including the Delta Stewardship Council, Department of Water Resources, and the State Water Board, to analyze and prepare information related to program costs. So in our case, it asked the council to prepare a cost estimate for implementation of the Delta plan, and it sets a deadline uh, for that preparation. The bill is alive and it's moving forward, but it's not yet scheduled for its next hearing. It remains to be seen if the bill will remain the same or change substantially, of course, as always, which I think depends on whether the legislature decides to begin water bond discussions in earnest. What's your best judgment on that question? I hear different stories every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, last Friday, Chris Knopp, Dan Ray, Dr. Goodwin, Keith Coolidge, and I went over to the Capitol to brief a group of legislative staff on the Delta Plan, as well as to discuss the science program and the draft science plan, which you'll be hearing about more today. The briefing was well received, and uh, I believe we had a good turnout, and we'll be performing these types of briefings periodically as we move forward with the implementation of the Delta Plan. Uh, lastly, a note on the legislative calendar. Uh, the Assembly and the Senate, for the first time that I'm aware of, have misaligned calendars for this year. Uh, this means the Assembly goes on summer recess July 3rd and returns August 5th, and the Senate adjourns July 12th and reconvenes August 12th, which is causing a, a modicum of confusion in the Capitol. And when they return, then they will have approximately five to six weeks to complete their work for the year. They'll move into floor sessions in September, and by mid-September, they will need to have their bills onto the governor's desk. Um, that's all I have for now, unless anyone has any questions. Well, it's tempting to talk about why they're on a different time schedule, but that's probably not terribly relevant to our business. Uh, any questions, members? Okay. okay. Thank you Jessica, for your time. Thank you very much.